Hi and welcome to the KSA Tech YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering setting up scenes or views in SketchUp. You can use these scenes to create an animation of your model or use them as a quick way to export a view as a 2D image using layout. We already have a tutorial on exporting a 2D image using layout, so if you need to know how to do this, feel free to pause this video, find our other tutorial, come back and continue watching this one. Using scenes in SketchUp essentially means that we can set up camera angles and view settings that are saved as a named view allowing you to quickly flick between these views whilst working to allow a quick setup of exporting 2D images. We can also set up a sequence of views that could be used to animate or walk through our building. To set this up, we'll be using scenes and styles to control what we want to see. The scenes tab can be viewed by using the scenes section on the right hand side of a SketchUp window. This is where we'll be setting up our camera angle for each scene, as well as setting the depth of field for the view we're using and the perspective we want to see. The Styles tab is also available on the right hand side of the SketchUp window, and this will allow us to choose what we want to see in each view, such as section cuts and hidden geometry. To get started, we'll position our camera where we want our first scene to show. Use the Pan, Zoom and Orbit tools from the Getting Started toolbar to place your camera to the desired angle. You can also adjust the depth of field of the camera. To do this, click on Camera at the top menu of SketchUp and select Field of View. Your mouse cursor will now change to a magnifying glass, similar to the zoom tool. Click and drag your mouse forward or back to adjust the depth of field for your camera. Keep in mind that extreme adjustment of this tool can warp the image, so only minor adjustments are recommended. By default, SketchUp uses a perspective view, which will work for most purposes to show 3D details and perspective, but for section cuts this probably isn't what we want to use. To change the perspective of the view to a more 2D perspective, we can use Parallel Projection from the camera menu at the top of SketchUp. When you select this, it will force you to reset up the camera angle, so bear this in mind if you're going to use it. To apply a section cut in SketchUp, we can use the Section Pane tool. Go to Tools along the top section of SketchUp and go to Section Plane. When we click this tool, it will allow you to snap your section plane to a particular surface as you can see happening here. As you move your mouse around the model, you may notice that the square changes colours. This means that this section pane is locked on either the X, Y or Z axis, as indicated by the red, blue and green colours. For surfaces that don't align with an axis, the square will turn pink. If you wish to alter the rotation of this section plane, hit one of the arrow keys and the square will flip to a different orientation. When you're happy with your section cut, just left click where you want your section to cut your model. Now our section cut is applied. To remove a section cut at this stage, we can zoom all the way out and see our section cut applied across the whole of the model. Use the select tool to select the section cut. Now hit the delete button on your keyboard to remove it. If you're happy with your section cut, then you can use the styles tab to hide the section pane. To do this, open the styles tab at the right hand side of SketchUp and go to the edit tab. Now to hide your section pane, untick the section pane box here. You can also toggle the section cut on and off using the section cut checkbox underneath it. In order to save the current camera angle, perspective and view settings as a scene, go to the Scenes tab on the right hand side of the SketchUp and click the plus button you see here. You may be asked whether you want to create a new style, update the existing style or do nothing. I'd recommend to create a new style if this option appears. Once a scene is created, you'll see a corresponding tab appear along the top of SketchUp underneath the toolbar. You can make changes to a scene once you've created it at any time. To make changes, click on the scene using the tabs and change whatever you wish to change. Once complete and you're happy with the changes, just right click on the tab you have currently selected and select the Update option. This will save the changes to that scene. We can now use these scenes to work between views, perspectives and settings quickly or use them to export the views as a 2D image. As I mentioned earlier, we can also use the scenes to create an animation of our building. In order to demonstrate this, I'm just going to create a few new views of different angles of the model, so I'll skip the tutorial ahead to when I've done this. Now that I have a few views set up with different angles, we can preview what our animation will look like by right clicking on the first tab in the queue and clicking play animation. SketchUp will now cycle between these views on a loop. This is what animation will look like when exported. To export your current views as an animation, 
Go to the file menu, hover your mouse over export, slide across the animation and then go to video. You may choose to export as a set of images that you could later turn into an animated GIF using After Effects or something similar, but this will most likely yield a heavier animation if you use an MP4 video on a loop. Before we export, there are some settings that we can change to help us fine tune the quality and make sure you have an animation that will play smoothly and won't unreasonably increase the size of your file. Bear in mind that the more scenes you have in your animation, the longer the video will be and the larger the file will be as a result, so try to keep the number of scenes to a minimum. To adjust the settings of your animation, click the options button you see here. To make your file as small as possible, but still keep reasonable quality, I'd recommend using the resolution as 720p HD and the frame rate to be around 15 frames per second. You can increase either of these two options, but this will lead to an increase in the size of your animation and how smoothly it plays if embedded into a presentation. Generally speaking, a heavier file will not play as smoothly and could even lead to your presentation crashing when it attempts to play. If you choose to attach this animation to your PDF, it will drastically increase the size of the file of the document. So keep this in mind when thinking about the quality and frame rate of your animation, and also the amount of animations you put into the file. If you aren't sure how to embed a video or animation inside a PDF, we have a tutorial coming soon that will show you how to do this, so keep your eye on the channel to see how this is done. In the meantime, thanks for watching the tutorial. Feel free to check out our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with videos as they're released. I hope to see you soon, but until then, have a good day.